Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline captain and instructor with interest in aviation history. Some days ago, I posted a quiz with five different aircraft, and I hope you managed to identify them all. If you haven't seen the quiz yet, please pause the video and click on the link below here, and then you can revert back to this video afterwards. So, are you ready for the answers? Okay, here we go. Number one. When I filmed this aircraft at the museum, I heard several people say to their family members and friends, look, a MiG-15. Yes, it has the same nose section as the MiG-15, but it's a little longer, and the wings and the tail fins are thinner and swept further back. This is the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-17. Because it's longer than the MiG-15, it appears to be more slim. You can see the differences on this drawing. The MiG-15 is in blue and the MiG-17 is in red. The easiest way to tell them apart is to count the wing fences. The MiG-15 has two, the MiG-17 has three. The MiG-17 also has a ventral fin. Compared to the MiG-15, the tail section of the MiG-17 is about one meter longer because it houses an afterburner. The MiG-17 was first flown in 1950. It was a development of the MiG-15. The prototype was called MiG-15 BIS-45. And this example is painted in the colors of the North Vietnam Air Force. During the Vietnam War, the MiG-17 proved to be a formidable opponent in dogfight for American fighters like the F-8 in the background. More than 11,000 MiG-17s were built and it served with 20 countries, and it's reported that it's still in service in North Korea. Number two. This cockpit was a familiar sight for many British pilots who learned to fly in the 1930s and during the Second World War. This is a de Havilland DH-82A Tiger Moth. First flown in 1931, the Tiger Moth was designed to meet a requirement for a military trainer. It was a refinement of the DH-60 Moth, which had some shortcomings. Most important, the forward seat in the DH-60 was located under the upper wing. This made it difficult for a pilot to jump out with a parachute in an emergency. On the Tiger Moth, the wings are attached to the fuselage further forward and to maintain the same lift center, the wings are swept back. The production ended in 1944 after nearly 9,000 units had been built. About 250 of them are still airworthy. And some years ago, I had the pleasure to fly one of them. It was a fantastic experience to fly in an open cockpit and hear the air sing in the wires. I'm planning to make a full video about this charming beauty later on. Number 3. The mighty Boeing 747 has 16 main wheels, but the world's largest airliner has 20. Of course, we are talking about the Airbus 380. Everything with this aircraft is big. It's 24 meters tall, 73 meters long, 80 meters wingspan, two full decks with a capacity of more than 800 passengers, maximum weight 575 tons and a range of nearly 15,000 kilometers. First flown in 2005, the A380 entered the service with Singapore Airlines two years later. The largest customer was the Emirates. They received 123 of the 254 aircraft built. Sadly, the production ended last year, in 2021, because the passengers love it for the comfort. And having flown it as a passenger, I fully agree. There were three test aircraft, and the one you see here is the second. It is on display at the Musée Aeroscopia in Toulouse, a couple of hundred meters from where it was built. It's worth a visit. Number four, when viewed from behind, 
This aircraft resembles an ATR-42 or 72, but it's smaller than an ATR-42 and it's more streamlined. Let's rewind the video. Now it's easy to see that this is a Dornier TO328. This aircraft was designed as a fast commuter airliner for up to 33 passengers. First flown in 1991, the aircraft has a modern glass cockpit and two Pratt & Whitney Canada turboprop engines rated at 2180 horsepower. Dornier predicted that there was a market for 400 units, but when the production ended in 2000, only 217 had been built. 110 of them are jet powered, the DO328 jet. A pilot who flew the jet version told me that he liked this because of the good performance and the ease of handling. The wing is a masterpiece that blends slow flight and high speed like no other wings have done before or after. Okay, maybe I exaggerate a little, but the turboprop version can take off from a 1100 meter long runway at maximum takeoff weight, climb to 25,000 feet and cruise at 335 knots. Number 5. I think I fooled many of you with this one. This is not a Pilatus PC6 Turbo Porter. Yes, it's the same fuselage, the same undercarriage, the same wings, the same tail, but one detail is different the exhaust pipe. The Turbo Porter is powered by a PT6 engine with two small exhaust pipes just behind the propeller. But this aircraft has a single large exhaust pipe. The reason is that this aircraft has a Garrett TPE331 engine. This is the Fairchild AU23 Peacemaker. The AU23 was built by Fairchild Aircraft on license from Pilatus in Switzerland in response to a 1971 requirement from the US Air Force for a short takeoff and landing armed utility aircraft to be used in Southeast Asia, which means the Vietnam War. It had hardpoints under the wings and a 20mm cannon installed in the cabin. 35 units were built, but after an evaluation by US Air Force, it was recommended that the aircraft should not be used in combat. It was just too slow. 34 of the aircraft were later supplied to Thailand. The example you see here is displayed at the Royal Thai Air Force Museum in Thailand. And now it's time to announce the winner. The first viewer who managed to identify all five aircraft is... Congratulations! Welcome to the Hall of Fame! And that's all for this time. I hope you liked the content of this video. And please support my channel by uh, sharing with your friends and all that. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning!